Hello, welcome back to the boat shed. In today's video, we are installing the rest of these bulkhead pieces and stick around to the end of the video where I'll share with you one idea that I have to keep these deck prisms running on the boat. If you're new here, my name is John and this boat beside me is Antidote. I'm an engineer and a sailor with a dream of fixing up this old boat to go sailing around the world. And I got a lot of work to do first. Last time you were here, we were putting some primer and paint down in the bilge area. And with that finished, we're just about ready to start putting these bulkheads in. Now there's just one thing I want to do before we start all that. So because I'm planning to make this watertight, I need to be able to pass cables through for the windlass, as well as any navigation lights and possibly some other things. So I know I need to install at least one cable gland and I'm gonna go with this guy here. This is our multi-seal cable gland. And we're gonna put this up top corner. I'm gonna prep these holes now while it's off the boat. It's gonna be easy to drill them perpendicular outside here. I'll get both services done. And then we'll treat it with epoxy too, so it's all sealed up just like everything else that we're doing. And then if we get any drips, it's not gonna get inside this bulkhead. So we're gonna start on that now. Now I do want it to be quite close to the top. So it'd be difficult to drill these holes later. We won't go right to the edge, we'll just go close. So we really only need this piece for now. So there's roughly what we've got. As I often like to do, I've decided to make a drill template for this fitting. And I've found that when I'm trying to plug long holes with epoxy that this actually makes the work come out the nicest. And it probably in the long run is a time saver. All right, so we'll put this here somewhere and drill all these holes through. Now I need to remember that since the hull tapers in here, if I put this too close to the edge, I won't be able to get the screws on. Let's try and account for that a little bit. All right, I think we're gonna go for it right here. Forgot to clamp a piece of wood on the bottom. That's gonna be an important piece of the puzzle so I don't split all that fiberglass. So we'll put that bit back in there to locate it. A little piece of scrap here. Okay, take two. Make sure we got all the way through. Looks good. Now we'll just enlarge the holes and then we're ready to plug them with epoxy. I'm giving the step drill bit a try here and it's supposed to be good at oversizing holes without walking away from the center. It seems to be working pretty well. So we can see here this hole is a little more than half inch, a little less than three quarters. So I think what we'll do is we'll cut out a three quarter inch hole. We'll just put some epoxy paste all the way around to seal it up. Okay, so we've got that roughed in now. I did have a few small breakthroughs. That's kind of annoying because that's gonna mean the epoxy is not gonna pull up so easily. All right, let's mix up some epoxy. I'm guessing that's gonna be three to four pumps. Let's start with three and see how that goes. Three was a good guess. Two would not have been enough. Four would have been too much. Let's let that soak in for a few minutes. All right, we're gonna draw that epoxy out now so we can thicken it up. Epoxy now has had a chance to cure for about 24 hours. I gave it a quick wipe with some soapy water as usual, just to make sure there's no blush on there. Let's knock this down flat, bore those holes out, and then this will be ready to go on the boat. If you've been watching this channel for a while, you'll know that the original bulkhead came out as one solid piece of three quarter inch plywood. Okay, maybe solid's a bit generous because it was completely failed, but to get anything back into the boat, it's gonna have to be made out of smaller pieces so it'll fit through the hatch and the companionway. After talking with Bob Perry and Jim Antrim, we've come up with a design that is four pieces, cut horizontally and vertically, and this is gonna give us a really strong one inch thick bulkhead. Now, 
We have the lower horizontal section in for quite some time while I finish the anchor locker. And now that that's ready to go, we're ready to start putting the upper bulkhead in. So that's really exciting. If you want to get caught up on the whole bulkhead journey, I recommend you check out this playlist. Hurry back because we're going to start putting this upper bulkhead in right now. With that complete, we are ready to install this upper bulkhead component and I am excited and also a little nervous to be gluing this in. Because the epoxy is such a permanent installation, I just keep thinking, uh, have I forgotten something? Is there something I'm missing? But we just need to press forward and I'm pretty sure we've got everything there. In preparation, I did one last dry fit of this piece, just like the lower section that we installed several weeks ago. This is all gonna be put in by screwing it in to some sacrificial boards that have a release film on the back. And for that, we're using, what else? Yes, you guessed it, my favorite release film packing tape. So hopefully that'll suck this up nice and tight to the existing tabbing, create a good seal, nice and flat, and we'll be ready to press on. So you see here I've traced out the existing tabbing so that we will be able to put some unthickened epoxy on this, glue all this in. I also ground a slight scarf to match this so that when we put some tabbing across there to seal up that joint, it'll just sit in there a little nicer. I also did a quick check of the measurements from the top of the bulkhead down to the deck to make sure that we're honoring the original shape. I don't want to change the curve of the deck too much. This is looking pretty good. Okay, so I think we're finally ready to go. Before we do, there's one more thing I want to show you. Come take a look. What I wanted to do here was to show you just how much the whole size has changed from the original as-built condition till now. So as you can see, it's dramatically different. We're gonna have a lot less access to it, but it should provide a lot more strength to the whole system. And this is still enough room for me to get in, and all my sail bags and things like that. So hopefully it's good. And now this old bulkhead gets to retire. Several episodes ago, I hung up that piece of fiberglass because I forgot to wipe down the substrate with acetone before gluing these parts together. And that's the piece of waste that was generated. So it reminds me every time I walk by that that's a very important part of the process. If you haven't seen that video, you can check it out up here. But needless to say, it's a really critical step. And so that serves to remind me that although we are all human, we need to, uh, remember to do all these steps. So let's get that acetone on there now, clean all these parts up, and then we'll be ready to start gluing them together. We let this unthickened epoxy set up for a bit before coming back with another batch thickened with some colloidal silica. Channeling my inner Bob Ross here. Just so much easier to get this off a board traveled on to the medium instead of trying to get this out of a little bucket. So let's get this up there before this starts to cook off. Hello, I'm John and I'd like to welcome you to the joy of epoxying. If this is your first time with us, allow me to extend a personal invitation to grab your travel and follow right along with us. So I tell you what, let's get started. Now, those look like some happy little mounds, wouldn't you agree? All right, at long last, the upper bulkhead is in and it's looking pretty good, I think. So we'll wait for tomorrow to know for sure as the epoxy needs some time to cure. But I think this is the exact right time to ask for you to hit that like button for me. Apparently all the YouTube gurus tell me it really helps this video get out to see more people. So I appreciate it very much. Thank you. All right, everything's looking really good in here. Let's get these braces pulled off and then we can clean up the front face to get ready to put the last two pieces on. Very exciting.
Well, I see a few areas that need to get cleaned up a little bit before we can tab on, but generally it looks pretty good. Unfortunately, we will need to do a little bit of grinding just to clean it up so the tabbing will sit nicely on there, but pretty much ready to go. Well, that has got to be one of the least pleasant jobs about working on this boat. Getting all suited up, sweaty, it was super hot, the sun on the shed yesterday, and grinding that fiberglass down, it's just no fun. But thankfully, that part is done for now. We have a couple of holes that we were used to bring this nice tight up against the tabbing, and I wanna plug the backs of those up because I don't want the epoxy that we're gonna apply here now to squish through. So we'll do that by taping up on the back sides. Now all these holes here that are used for mounting that rail, I wanna plug on this side so I don't fill them with epoxy because I need to be able to drill them from this side to reestablish the location once we get the new pieces on. So let's get going. <laughs> These holes that we're going to bolt through. I'm thinking what I'll try to do is just cover two very slightly inside the epoxy rings that they're in and then I'll be able to glue everything together and then use those two holes to chase it through. Does that make sense? <laughs> Let's take a quick second to say thanks to the folks on Patreon that really helped make this channel a possibility. Couldn't do it without you guys. Thank you all so much. As I've been working on this refit, I get a lot of great comments from all of you guys and I read every single one of them. And one of them that came up when I started working on this bulkhead was the idea to make it watertight. It's not really something that I had considered before, but I think it's an intriguing idea. Now, I've already pressed on starting down that path, but I wanted to share with you an interaction that I had with someone who I really look up to when it comes to getting advice for what really works out on the water. You might have seen in some of my other videos or if you follow me on Instagram that I am a big fan of John Kretschmer. Now, his book, Sailing a Serious Ocean, was one of the major reasons that I launched this project, although John will be the first to admit that refitting a large sailboat is not a great way to get out on the water, at least if you're in any sort of hurry. <laughs> Recently, I had the chance to pick John's brain about the idea during one of his captain's hours. He hosts these monthly Zoom meetings where you can jump on the call and he shares some stories about his current adventures and then people get to ask questions. This time he was down on the southern tip of Argentina as he was getting ready to round Cape Horn for the second time in a little over 40 years. So that's really incredible. I wanted to share with you some of the things that he had to say about the watertight bulkhead idea. And I apologize for the less than ideal audio and video quality, but I think it's a really cool talk. So I wanted to share it with you. Here we go. We're working here and I found my forward bulkhead was a little bit uh, soft so I'm replacing it and I'm just thinking I'm wondering about the idea of making it like a like a watertight bulkhead yeah like you know I saw that question really got me thinking and and I like the way you phrased it is is, is it worth the effort to do that <laughs> yeah. Yeah. um you know it's an interesting thing because it's a really hard project to make a boat water a bulkhead truly watertight yeah. Um, you probably have wires running through it up to lights and windlasses and things anyway. Um, so those have to be kind of, you know, put in gasketed and all of that. But the more I sat here thinking about it, cause I, I was working on Quetzal's staysail chain plate and four stay chain plate up through that forward little bulkhead. And many, and I looked at it and it was tabbed massively as I bet yours is too. Um, but I thought, well, I should take the, make the effort to make this totally watertight up here. And then I was just overwhelmed with other projects, and I didn't. And I was just thinking, in your state of the refit, it's probably one of those things that would make a lot of And probably it's never going to be something that comes into play 
but it's a doable project. Your boat's built like a battleship. Um, yeah. Fiberglass work. And if you were to have an impact, it's most likely going to be on the bow. And if yeah. it even just slows things down enough for you to enact an emergency repair, there's virtually no downside to it, except that it's a bunch of work right now. But I think there's loads of upside to it. And I think it also gives the boat a lot of value. I mean, it would be interesting to people buying your boat saying, well, the water, the forward bulkhead is watertight. How big will the compartment, act, is the compartment that would actually be contained? I, how many gallons would it be? No, just what's the distance from the forward bulkhead like to the stem? Uh, it is about six feet. So it's a big area. So, yeah. Yeah. I figured, yeah. I figured it was like 3,000 pounds of water yesterday, if it was full, uh -huh. roughly. But it's a dramatic difference between having it just plunging and filling the boat. Um, I mean, if you, and you've got the, that's a good plan to be able to dump it into the anchor locker where it gets pumped overboard. Is that going to be like on a manual switch or a float switch or how? I'll are you probably have a float switch on that. Yeah. I would put, and will you, it'll be able, will you be able to get at it from the top still? Yeah, I'll be able yeah. to access the whole locker from the top. It's just, it's so deep that I can't, unless someone holds my ankles and lowers me down, I can't actually like get in there and reach to the bottom because I just yeah. physically don't fit. So uh, um, it's a bit of an odd. Yeah, no, I can believe me, wedging myself into <laughs> this little locker. My shoulders would not fit through the stupid little door up there. And I would just, and I'd finally get in there to like work on the bottom of the chimney. And I would think, how am I ever going to get out of here? <laughs> yeah. What a great project. Well, I will check out your video for sure. <laughs> I, I think it's a cool thing. And I, honestly, I think it's a, a really interesting idea for you to explore, you know, in your videos. Because I think it puts a lot of peace of mind. I mean, one of the advantages of these aluminum boats people buy is that they have watertight bulkheads. You know, this right. kind of... And to be able to do it in a glass boat would be a, a really cool thing. And just, you know, even if it is an area where even if somebody just crunched into you in a dock or some other place, it's not necessarily hitting something offshore. But most of your collision points occur yeah. right there. Yeah. So, so the more I thought, my initial reaction was, that's eh, not worth it. I've never, but then I thought, you know what, you've got it all torn apart. It's the perfect time to do it. Yeah, I think I'll press forward then with uh, trying to figure out a solution for that. Sorry about that. <laughs> cool. Thanks, John. Yeah. Good to so see you're you. You're making good progress, huh? We're making progress, yeah. It takes a lot longer to tell the story than to do the work. So <laughs> that's a challenge. Yeah. I'm having fun. That's cool, John. Thanks for chiming in, brother. Good seeing you. Yeah. Good to see you too. Thanks. Well, thanks, John, for stopping by the channel. I can't think of anybody that has more experience in small boats out on the open ocean, so I really value your opinion. Now, for all you out there, there's no sponsorships or kickbacks here. I just really am a big fan of John's work. We'll put a link in the description to his website if you want to check out some of his sailing adventures or his books. I can't recommend them highly enough. Well, we're ready to get back to it, and I think that bulkhead's ready to go. What I'm going to do now is do a couple of pre-drills in here because I want to be able to screw this together. I have some nice three-quarter inch 316 screws I got from Bolt Depot that I'm going to put in here just to hold this together, suck it in nice and tight. I'll probably just leave them in there and fiberglass right over them. I'll just mark off a few places here. We'll do some pre-drilling and then that'll just give us a nice way to suck this tight together when we bring it up with the glue.
pretty dramatic right now. You can really see on this piece how dry it is since it's been soaking in for a little longer than this one. So we're gonna keep putting a little bit of wet epoxy on both of these pieces until we stop seeing that. And then we'll mix up some thick stuff and put these together. Well, it feels great to finally get those bulkhead pieces in, and I think it's really gonna improve the boat. So while we wait for the epoxy to cure, let's go ahead and take a look at those prisms. Both Bridget and I really appreciate the light that these prisms bring into the boat. Now, we'd like to keep them if at all possible, but as most things are with this project, it's not as straightforward as it seems. The original installation was to recess the glass directly into the 5 8 thick teak decking. Now, the trim rings that held the glass in place were secured into the teak with regular wood screws, and then everything was bedded with some sealant. Now, this is a pretty common installation method, and of course, it's notorious for leaking. Since we're not planning on reinstalling the teak here, I'd like to find a way to keep the prisms, but lower them a little bit so that they are as flush as possible to the deck. Over at Sailing Magic Carpet, Maya and Aladino have some bronze frames that are designed to hold the glass below the deck level, so that's certainly one option, but of course, there has to be a harder way. I've wondered about making some panels out of G10 that I could machine to accept screws and they would actually hold the glass prisms inside the deck. They would basically substitute for the local core material. My first design idea was extremely complicated and in, if this is even possible to be machined, it would be unbelievably expensive. So I abandoned that plan. I thought about it some more and wondered if I could epoxy some blocks onto a thinner, maybe an eighth of an inch plate of G10. That would take care of the difficult machining and also get me more or less the same result. Well, I'd love to hear what you think about this. Would you go with the bronze frames, take the prisms out altogether, or forge ahead with a G10 plan? Well, we read all the comments here, and I'd love to hear what you think about the deck prism idea since I'll be working on them very soon. So go ahead and put your comments down below. I'd like to give a huge thanks to the folks whose names are appearing up there who really make this channel a possibility. And now we make new videos about the Antidote Restoration Project every two weeks, so be sure to come back for another one. If you are new here and you would like to get caught up from the very start, this playlist is for you. And if you'd like to subscribe for more of this content, there's a button right there. Thanks so much, see you next time. I'm actually not sure I'll be able to get out of here, so if there isn't a new video out in a couple of weeks, will someone please come look for me? Bridget, if you're watching, can you please come up and unlock the door?